after he told me, I could see the weight lifted off of his shoulders. It's like it's like God washed over him and he was like fresh, free from this thing he'd been hiding for all these years. Talk about secrets. Mm. In that exact moment, I have never felt so buried under bondage mm -hmm. than I had in my whole life. Hi friends, welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos an accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey, a leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure, and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Hello, our friends. Come on in here. We've got so much to talk about today. We're not going to waste any time. None. No, let's jump right in. Don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> not that we ever waste time. In fact, we can talk about our hair and, um, you know, vacation plans, nails, For days, whatever. Always. And, and it's never wasted no. time. No, time we, well we enjoy it. That's uh -huh. what we do all the time, though. Jay and I are well representing our beach desires with our toe polished color so because you have bright neon yeah I'm, yes i have toe not neon for the beach. toe yeah like a neon greenish toe in mine and are we going to the beach no because that's the closest <laughs> to the beach no. we can yep, get my feet live like it. <laughs> <laughs> well i i do love to think about the beach as like you know totally free the waves yeah. the uh -huh. sand uh -huh. lots of room to roam uh -huh. and today we are talking about True freedom. Yes. <laughs> I love this topic so yes. much. It is such a good topic. And it, it may or may not involve the beach at all. We don't have to have that. <laughs> Bummer. To be free. <laughs> true. But That's this true. is a great topic. And I think it's something that people don't realize how important it is right. to be truly free. And what a gift God is giving us by mm -hmm. saying you, you can have freedom. Because mm -hmm. I think about how love is unconditional, right? God's mm -hmm. love is unconditional. He loves us, loves us, no matter what. But freedom, it comes with some conditions. Like there are some steps that we have to take mm -hmm. right. to really experience God's freedom. He wants us to have it, yeah. right. but we have to play a part in it. Mm -hmm. right. so. Yeah, there are all these things that secretly mm -hmm. steal our freedom. Things like insecurity, yes. comparison, yeah. um, even... even the need for control. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, when uh -huh. I think I'm in control, <laughs> yep. that's when I have the yep. least freedom. Yeah. yeah. I think freedom is a word that we often kind of just throw around. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, in America, we talk about that. We have the 4th of July and we celebrate our freedom as a country and it's just a word that we use. But I don't think we understand how that applies to our, like our everyday. Right. Like on yeah. a Tuesday, I can have freedom. And right. what does that look like in my life? Right. Yeah. And I, I think of freedom in so diff so many different ways. Of course, as a black woman, I think yeah. of freedom, you know, yeah. for people of color, mm -hmm. you know, but then as, as a woman that has experienced the freedom of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, what I thought was the freedom of Jesus, and I, I plan on talking about that a little more later, like just what I thought was the freedom of Jesus and now truly experiencing more freedom than I've ever mm -hmm. experienced before, oh, yeah. like redefining mm -hmm. what freedom is. Mm -hmm. I think it's 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 been a, a great journey. It's been super challenging, but freedom is a lot easier for those that are in Christ than than we um, mm -hmm. than we really. I think a lot of us don't, aren't free. Yeah, oh, I think you're definitely you right. Know, so, yeah. You know, like in our in our minds and our spirits and our lives, like you know, like thank God for the freedom we have in America. Thank God for the freedom that you know, like black people, you know, fought mm -hmm. for. Like I'm grateful for that. But I'm talking about a spiritual freedom yep. mm -hmm. that we have that. I didn't even know really what that meant yeah. until recently. Because we're going to talk about this in such a wide variety today. Mm -hmm. Because here at Joyce Meyer Ministries, we also believe in fighting for freedom yeah. for women and girls we all do. around the world who have some really difficult situations. And then we're going to get into the very practical day-to-day -day freedom that we all need in our own lives. So yeah. we're going to talk about it all, and you are in the right place. So let's start with Joyce. She's going to pray for us. What a great way to get yes, started. And great. she's going to talk about what freedom is, and then we will get into talking it out. <laughs> freedom, how to live a life of 
freedom, enjoying a life of freedom. Father, we thank you that you came to set us free. And we want to know what that really means, how to appreciate it, and how to really be free in every single area of our lives. Amen. Well, enjoying a life of freedom. The word free means, in the Greek dictionary, free from bondage or slavery, free from restraint or obligation, free to go over wherever one likes, free from sin, liberated or to have liberty. Free in the Webster's dictionary says, not imprisoned or enslaved, at liberty, not controlled by obligation or the will of another. See, even God doesn't want us to do things for him out of obligation. He wants us to do them because we want to. Amen? You don't read the word every day out of obligation. If you do, you're reading it under the law, and I can guarantee you're getting very little out of it. But if you read it because you want to know what he has to say about your life, and you read it because you're smart, and you want to be instructed, and you know there's power in the word, then that's a different story. Not affected or limited by... Circumstances or conditions, free from want, free of jealousy, uninhibited, outspoken, spontaneous, unconstrained, unconfined, not bound, fastened, or attached. I like the word freedom, don't you? One of the first scriptures that I learned when I became a student of the word, or two scriptures, John 8, 31 and 32, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, when I first read that I was in more bondage than I would even have time to name here tonight, and I can truly say that over the years, it is a process, and you do have to continue in the Word. John 8, 31 says, if you continue in my Word, not if you just read it once, or as I've continued in the Word and applied the Word to my life. Everybody say applied. applied. Say Applied. Because see, just reading it won't fix your problem. It's finding out what God says, and then with the help of the Holy Spirit, aren't you glad that Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to help us do everything he tells us to do? You can't do it without God's help. That really helps open your mind to what freedom really is. It's yeah. so big. Yeah, it is. It's so important, and it's so much more then, like you said, we give it credit for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And God wants to instill that and help us with it, mm -hmm. but we have steps that we need to take. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is inspire you, all of our friends who are listening right now, yeah. we want to inspire them to fight, to claim that freedom. Yep. And to fight for it, do whatever it takes mm -hmm. where God is leading you. And we're going to start by introducing you to an amazing young woman who I love so, so very much, who is fighting for her own freedom in a big way. Um, Mercy is with us, Mercy and Yabe. And I met Mercy in Zambia. She's coming to us from Zambia. Hi, Mercy. Right. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, this, this is like the most fun for me because what I love is bringing my friends together. And I'm like, you guys have heard about Mercy since I met her when she was 14 wow. Wow. in Zambia. She is a beautiful 18-year-old woman now, uh -huh. and I, I I just got to reconnect. And Mercy, <laughs> I, I got to tell you again, I told you this before when we were together in Zambia, but I am just so <laughs> impressed with the young woman that you're becoming. You're so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> Mercy and I spend a lot of time just giggling, basically, when we're together, <laughs> and it's the best thing ever. <laughs> but Mercy comes from an area in Zambia where young women really have to fight for their own freedom because they live in a culture where it's common to offer a young woman in marriage, and when I say young woman, it's, it's she's really a child, to offer a child in marriage as soon as she's old enough to bear children wow. and to usually polygamous marriages, and they're often very, very bad situations. And Mercy, you've seen your friends really suffer through situations like that, haven't you? 
Yeah, I have. And it's really bad watching them not having a right to have a great future. Yeah. And I've seen you over these years really work to grow and get that education that God wanted you to have and to learn who He has made you to be and to really fight for a bright future. So Mercy's in what we call an Imagine Hope Center. We have several of them in this area where we give girls the opportunity to get an education Mm -hmm. rather than being sold into a marriage at, at an early age. So Mercy has worked really hard, graduated that program. And now, Mercy, you are in a leadership college. You are going to lead your nation and who knows, probably the world into a better place. I really believe that. You know, like when I got the chance like to be part of uh, the Marginal Center, I kind of learned that I have a purpose and it is my duty to kind of like work hard and also allow God to guide me throughout my purpose so that I can reach where he wants me to be. Mm. So I want to become a preacher. Mm. I just want to travel over the world preaching the gospel of Christ to those that do not know it, and also to be able to help my community to get to know more about Christ. Yeah. I love that. I love that, Mercy. I have a question for you. Because you've seen so much and you've experienced so much at such a young age, I'm interested to know what the word freedom means to you. I think... For me, freedom is just being free from uh, a kind of thing where you're not allowed to become who you want to become. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's also freedom just gives me a relief just to know that, you know what, I'm free. I can become what I want to become because looking back at where I come from, where you just don't get that chance. Yeah. So it's like being free to get an access to education, being free to just study and do everything. And also just being free to know more about Christ and everything. That's freedom to me. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I love the word that yeah. you used, relief, because I think that truly captures what freedom feels like, mm-hmm. whether it is whatever kind of freedom we're experiencing, it does feel like relief because yeah. you you can go from feeling stuck or whatever to the ability to do something, to, to know what your purpose is in Christ. I think that's the whole point of freedom in general is who does God want you to be? Yeah. You know, how do you want to help uh, you you said it's important for you to make a difference in your community for other young girls who are coming up and who are facing some of these difficult things. Why is that so important for you and how do you want to do it? Uh, so it's really important because I want every girl to have a right to education, become their own person, you know, and it's not just like, you know what, I just want to become a doctor. But if they have like that kind of freedom saying that, you know, after I'm done with with this, great, I'm going to go to the next. And then in university, then I can work like that kind of like feels like there's happiness in that. And I just want to help. I don't like it's going to be hard on the start, but I just want to be there for my community and kind of tell them like uh, that they can become whatever they want. And it doesn't matter whether you're a girl or a boy, because we all have the, the freedom to become whatever we want. Yeah, that's been something that you have really stood up in. And you've stood up and said, God has made me a girl. He's made me a strong woman and he loves me as much as he does anybody else. Um, I I think that's so important of a message to share with the world right now. So you tell me in your own words, how does God see you? Yeah. I think the Lord sees me as uh, like a beautiful princess created for a purpose and uh, someone that is going to be there for others that kind of went through f- f- well, with what I went through and someone that is going to help and make a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and there you have it. That is why I love this young woman <gasps> wow. so very much. I love it. We love you now too, like Ginger does. <laughs> yeah, you are so <laughs> great. You're so great. Hey, one, I have another, one more question for you, for me at least, is like, 
with all the things that you faced and you have this beautiful, bright smile, Mm -hmm. how do you, when you, when you go through tough times, how do you keep that smile? Like, how do you fight for that smile? Like what keeps Mm -hmm. you going? Cause you have such a beautiful smile. It radiates through the screen. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when I am like in my hardest, there's always one thing that I've come to know is that the Lord is going to be always there for me and he's going to bring in people that are going to help me in uh, in that kind of time. And I say, you know what, I'm not going to give up on him. He's going to fight my battles and he's going to be there for me. So no matter how what I'm going through, I just have always to put on a smile. Because you just never know what others go through. Maybe it's yeah. less than what you're going through. It's bigger than like that. So a smile kind of even helps others. Like, you know what? To smile better. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Thank you. She just spreads joy everywhere she, she goes. Mm-hmm. She just does. Mm-hmm. So, Mercy, thank you. Thanks for talking it out with us. It's been yes. so fun having you on the podcast with us. We're going to see you hopefully again soon. I'm, I'm sure we'll be FaceTiming if nothing else. So <laughs> love you, friend. Love you, too. Thank you so much. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> She she just like you said always has that joy. Yeah. She, we just we laugh and we have the most fun together, but she can go deep in the Lord. She knows what God has brought her through and the yeah. freedom that he's given her. Yeah. And not to take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she is an inspiration you to can, me. You can you can totally tell that she has a depth to her. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so even, even it's rooted. It's rooted in her yeah. and it it reflects in the smile, but mm-hmm. it also yeah. reflects and the clarity that she has Mm -hmm. in expressing her purpose. It was Mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, so she's part of one of the the most important things we do here, which is called Project Girl, where we're sharing just the truth with women and girls around the world. And where she lives, it's very, very rural, um, on the Zambezi River in Zambia. And what you'll see is... um, over the huts, when a woman begins menstruating, when she's old enough to have a child, they'll put a flag up at wow. that house. And that flag says, we now have mm-hmm. a woman. You can come make your bids. And cool. it is just like, In 2022, whoa. that's still happening? Exactly. That's crazy. It's changing, though. And that's what's exciting. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not seeing it now as much as we used to since we've been working in this that's area. Awesome. So when, when I hear that, I think, okay, there's, there are so many things that take our freedom away. You know, there's sin in our life. Yeah. There's wrong mindsets, thinking that takes our freedom away. Um we need to be inspired to fight in the same way for ourselves Mm -hmm. and for other people around Mm -hmm. the world. So we're going to check right back in with Joyce now, and she's going to help us stay on track by understanding what being free truly means. And then we're going to talk about some of those things that have maybe um, locked us up a little bit. Sure. Liberty means a state of being free from control or restrictions. John 8, 36 says, so if the Son liberates you and makes you free, then you are really and unquestionably free. Completely and totally free. Now, let's go on a little bit. I want to talk to you about being free from, free in, and free to. (laughs) Free from, free in, and free to. Example. We can, of course, be free in relationships, free to praise and worship God, free in unpleasant circumstances, free while we are waiting to be free from unpleasant circumstances, (laughs) free from allowing our emotions to control us, free from jealousy, free from self-pity, free from overeating, on and on and on. Here's an example. You can be free to confront and yet free to submit. This half of the room is getting it better. (laughs) You can be free to confront somebody that you feel like is controlling you, but you can also be free to submit to proper authority that God places over you. So the thing we can't do is just yell, well, I'm I'm free. I'll do what I want to. I'm free. (laughs) Let me be clear. That is not freedom. That is stupidity. 
Nobody can do everything they want to do and expect to have any friends and a great life. Amen? You can be free to enjoy food and yet at the same time free from overeating. Now, you know, it's just a little bit silly for somebody that's born again and full of the Holy Spirit <laughs> to say, if I eat one cookie, I have to eat the whole bag. <laughs> if I eat one potato chip, I've got to eat the whole bag. I mean, did you even hear how silly that sounds? I mean, if you don't have authority over a cookie, or a potato chip, we are in serious trouble. Serious, serious trouble. But it's one of the taglines of some of my favorite potato chips. You just can't that's <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> I love how practical this is. No, so, no, you know, yeah. and and her favorite line is like, if if you think that doing whatever you want is freedom, you're just being stupid. <laughs> because yeah. she's so right. She's so right. She's, when when. When we do whatever we want, mm -hmm. that's often when we end up in the worst bondage. Yeah. It's true. I think it's interesting, too, when she said free from, free in, free to. That's like very all-encompassing of every part of our life. Uh -huh. You can't. It's not just like you have freedom over here in this pocket, but not over here. It's it, That's like everything from every angle. There's a way to find freedom yeah. in that situation. I had that situation when I first got married, and I've told you a little bit about this, but... I had to learn that I could have freedom in a relationship where we respected one another. So in other words, mm -hmm. it didn't have to be because I was kind of that strong woman that no one was going to tell me what to do. And I still am that, you know. But anyway. <laughs> still, working, still working through. But um, you, you can't have a, a godly relationship where you love and submit to one another, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you have priorities where you understand how a relationship works yeah. uh -huh. and yet you still have the freedom to be who God wants you to be because you support one mm -hmm. another in that. So I really had to learn that it's like freedom isn't get away from me. I don't need any help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Freedom is understanding how we're better together in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, th there was so much that I had to learn about what it meant to be a strong, free woman. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much, and like I said earlier, I'm just learning so much more about what freedom really, really is. Mm -hmm. And I had to first acknowledge how bound I was mm. most of my life. Like, I don't even realize it, do we? Don't, no. Yeah. Like, we were fortunate enough to be raised in a Christian home, but my dad was a pastor. Mm. And one of the things that even the denomination we were in was like, don't bring a reproach on yourself, God, your family, or the church. And so I lived a life just very afraid to even be me yeah. because I didn't want to bring a reproach or I didn't want to make my family look bad or make my church look bad. Mm. or make. So I, I put myself in this category of almost trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I was very judgmental to, to those that didn't make the right, de the right mm -hmm. decisions because it was like, it's a choice. Like you didn't have to make that choice. And, mm -hmm. and, and granted, we don't, there are choices that we can and can't make, but I said it in such a judgmental way, a religious way that I didn't realize yeah. how bound I was mm. um, until honestly in, in my marriage, I was, I had pretty much freedom. Like we were, we were kind to each other and I, you know, we helped each other. That wasn't the problem. We didn't have a terrible marriage, you know, but it wasn't until I got the divorce when I realized that I knew in that phase of where I was with the divorce, I could not in my own, like what I was accustomed to doing. Cause I would never stop leading. I would never stop leading worship. I would never stop ministering. Like I just would just keep going, plowing through pain. Mm -hmm. But this particular test, I was like, I cannot lead right now. And the freedom to say, I can't do this right now, mm -hmm. felt so good. It was the first time I've ever done that in almost 40 years. It's like... You you had the freedom to take care of yourself. I when had you the freedom to. to take care of And God of me. gave you that grace. Exactly. But I, all of my life, I was afraid to do yeah. that. Yeah. So you, that was the first time you'd ever experienced that, that freedom to, to take care of yourself like that? Yeah. Was it? 
Yeah. Which well, is so crazy. many people are in that same spot, I'm sure. Yeah, like Absolutely. Ministry, I felt like my, ministry. Yeah, I mm-hmm. felt like that was the way that God knew that I loved him because I just kept going, kept sure. going and kept going. And I was even though I was burnt out, that was the first time I just said, I I cannot do this. Mm-hmm. If I want to stay connected to God like I want to stay connected, if I want to be healthy, if I want to work on me and my daughter's relationship mm-hmm. and it, it, that was that was the first time I I feel like I experienced freedom because I was still worried about what people sure. thought of me yeah. and what they would think of me. But I was kind of like, it doesn't even matter. And that was the I'm like, oh, wait, huh. I think that's what freedom really is supposed to feel like. <laughs> All this time I haven't really felt free to make a decision that me and God were good with. Yeah. But I was worried about what the church or what people would think. Mm-hmm. Don't you wonder like how many people in the church feel that exact same way in the name of ministry? How often do we bind ourselves up and put all these expectations on ourselves mm-hmm. because we are doing it for God or because the people expect it of us? I bet there's so many because I relate to that in yeah. different kinds of ways. It's so but, many. Yeah. And even, like just even with like, like infidelity in churches and things like that. Like you think of the pastors that don't feel free to even like I think of my ex even like free to go to counseling mm-hmm. because of your right. because of your position in a church you're so bound to that position and religion that you don't even get the help that you need yeah. before you make like a really bad decision sure. you know let's so, talk about the prison of secrets exactly mm-hmm. so many people so bound many people are bound because uh, not me like I can't go through that like right th- so many people and I've seen it, especially like my parents generation just really having a tough time now seeing their kids that are that are willing to say I'm messed up I need help yeah. I go to counseling seeing the freedom that we're experiencing mm-hmm. not just through prayer and supplication which is what we need but also counseling and, and mm-hmm. taking the medicine we need and and accountability things that my parents really didn't have but they see us and they see the freedom we have and it's almost like they're somewhat envious of it and it's mm-hmm. like no right. you too can experience this freedom right. it's free you know it's through Jesus but it's also through being free like and mm-hmm. doing the taking the steps to be free it's mm-hmm. just the secret thing is so... Yeah. It, oh, it's what makes you sick. Yeah. And, yeah. It's what binds you mm-hmm. up. The enemy knows where, I think especially as Christians, where to get like that foothold. It's a Christian term. We say that a lot, footholds. But <laughs> in the church... That's a foothold. Right, you just put your little beach <laughs> toes in there. And, um, it, we are so afraid of how we will look mm-hmm. to other Christians. Yeah. We, we won't say anything because we don't want you know, expectations or whatever. And then, then it just gets deeper and darker. And so in your pain, you just sit and hold all these dark, this darkness. Yeah. And what did Jesus opposite. say? He said, the truth will set you free. Yes. You know, he, he came to set the captives free. Yeah. He didn't come to say, this is sin and this is sin. And because you're in it, you're never going to get out of it. Mm-hmm. He came to say, yes, this is sin, mm-hmm. but I've overcome it. And in me, you can walk in freedom. Yeah. And unless we grab that mm-hmm. and, and honestly are willing enough to say, you know what, I really, I really screwed up. Yeah. I have been doing this mm-hmm. or I have been thinking this. And if, if we can't freely do that, we may take steps toward freedom, but we'll never get all the way there. We'll never get all the way free of it. Let me ask this question because I, I have found personally that this is a really important question. Does your freedom depend on other people? Does it depend on what other people do to you or keep from you? She's asking me this question. Um, yes, I th- <laughs> it does impact you, but eventually no. So I would like to re-answer that question. <laughs> no, I know exactly. <laughs> In a different way. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean so right? far. Yes. Um, so... I would like to share with you why, how I have felt this directly. I would like to not cry right away, but it will happen. So um, I've shared with you guys before that Mike and I went through the past couple of years really hard. Well, and I'm going to say this with Mike's blessing and lots of prayer. Um, but he confessed to me a couple of years ago that he had been addicted to porn for since he was a teenager. And he had lied to me our whole marriage. So... So many things in that, that one day we'll talk about, but for today in this topic of freedom, like after he told me, I could see the weight lifted off of his shoulders. It's like, it's like God washed over him and he was like fresh, free from this thing he'd been hiding for all these years. Talk about secrets. Mm. 
in that exact moment, I have never felt so buried under bondage mm-hmm. than I had in my whole life. And so he gets freedom <laughs> and I get pain yeah. uh-huh. for, uh, I mean, I've just never walked through anything like that before. And so now I've got, I was feeling really good about myself at that point. Like I look good. I got two kids. I got my stuff together. Now I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough. I've been lied to for 11 years. And so now I have the weight of all this stuff to carry and you feel super free. So yeah, I think people do impact how we, f- our freedom. Mm-hmm. But I also know that I know that I know that that's not how you stay because of, that's why I love Project Girls so much. Who I am in Christ is what defines my freedom and not because of what Mike did or didn't do to me. So yes and no. I yeah. think that's the perfect answer. And it's so brave of you to share that. And, um, you know, obviously this is a very special place in my heart too, because, you know, my my husband and I have been through the same thing and I know that pain and I know how hard it is. And yet it's different for everyone. And I think that's really important is that we don't put other people in a box that binds them by telling them how they should feel or how they should deal Mm -hmm. with what it is that they're going through. But... I do know what you mean by that point of release for him was the dump truck that backed up over me and on the way dumped all of the crap down on top of me. And I was supposed to dig my way out. And there's so much that I've learned about that, that yes, our freedom is absolutely impacted by what others do to us or around us, but... There's something so miraculous in who God is and His love for us mm-hmm. that is the only thing that can overcome that stuff. And, and yep. it, took, it took me a long time to dig out of that pile and to figure that out, that I, my freedom wasn't dependent on how I thought Tim felt about me or saw me. Like you said, I'm not right. good enough. I'm not what he wants. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not whatever. Mm-hmm. All those things that go through your mind. And I, I remember doing um, an interview on death row in a prison with a prisoner who I knew had more freedom at that moment than I did because wow. he was sharing what God had done for him mm-hmm. and how he's free even behind bars. Yeah. And you begin to realize that, yes, people can take your freedom, mm-hmm. But God can set you free wherever you are and whatever it is that you're dealing with. And it sounds impossible. Like, it's just like, I don't know, that that doesn't really make sense. But I've seen it. I've seen it over and over and over. Yeah. And this freedom that we're talking about is a supernatural freedom. It is. Yeah. It's not a physical freedom always. Mm-hmm. It is a, a spiritual freedom yeah. that that changes things. It yeah. does. It It's... Um... It was it was like an out of body experience when I found out because I remember, despite the hatred I felt and worked through for a while, um, I also was so like from a it was only the Lord I could watch Mike and I I could feel like empathetic and like wow what does that feel like to feel that release of something you've carried for so long and despite my anger like f- for a moment I was able to feel that that spiritual freedom that you're talking about that it isn't. It isn't just about f- being physically bound. It's to be let go of something that you've been hiding for so long. Mm-hmm. You can't explain what that feels like until you've done it. And it's that's so much bigger than, I yeah. think, a physical. And it's not instantaneous either. Like, oh, no. I know, you know, for all of the men mm-hmm. who have been dealing with pornography or all of the people who have been dealing with an addiction or some sort of hidden thing that they didn't want anybody to know about. Mm -hmm. There is that first release when you start to work toward your freedom, but then it's that constant, you Mm -hmm. know, working on it and working on it and giving it to God and taking it back and giving it to God and taking it back. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a long journey, Yeah, but (laughs) our journey always impacts somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's important to keep that in mind when you're sharing, like anybody watching, male or female, if you're watching and you, yeah. you have a secret that you need to tell someone, mm-hmm. you, you need to find the courage to do it, but do it in love. 
you know, because it does affect other people. Yeah. But I encourage you to at least do it because I remember my ex didn't tell me mm-hmm. and I felt like something and that was binding me by feeling like he was keeping a secret mm-hmm. from me. Yeah. And I felt like I was going crazy, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, I know. But then when God finally revealed it to me and then I confronted him on it, he told me he was like, no, no, no. But then finally I got proof of it. And then it was, he couldn't deny it anymore. Then if, if I still, I too remember him feeling, looking like he felt free. Mm-hmm. He felt free by me discovering. Mm-hmm. So also be careful. If you want to find something about somebody and you start scrolling and, and investigating, are you prepared to handle what comes after that? Because I really, I thought that it was going to be a freedom. Like he was going to feel free to then mm-hmm. confess and then we work on it. No, yeah. his freedom, <laughs> his freedom. He packed his bags and left me on Valentine's day, you know? So I just, but what that still did for me was it still unlocked a level of freedom in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either way, the truth will will make yeah. us free. Whether it hurts or not, yep. it still will make us free. Because when I look back, I'm like, who wants to be in a marriage that's mm-hmm. full of lies yep. and deception? I said the same thing because I always, like I shared two years ago how Mike and I went through all that stuff in the beginning of our marriage and what he had told me how he was struggling and... um I always knew something was was there, and I we couldn't I couldn't figure out what it was, and so I knew something was happening. So even when I was so angry, I was so grateful because I felt like there's an answer. There's there's some freedom in knowing. I'm what, not crazy. Yes, yeah. I, and I'm not just this insecure person. Yes, dwelling on things in the past. There's something present that's there. Yes, yeah. I was so grateful for for the truth, and then you know you had to walk through all that. But yeah, there's. That light, when God sheds light on a situation, that that is where freedom is found. You mm-hmm. find freedom in the light. That's exactly right. Not in the right. darkness. That's exactly right. Yeah. And what, what the Bible tells us, and we're, we're going to listen to Joy share a little bit more about this, is we have to be so careful about who and what we give control over our yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how we protect our freedom. Mm-hmm. So let's hear what Joyce has to say about that. Now here we're going to dive off the deep end and see what you guys can take. Romans 6, 6, and 7, we know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil and that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. Now, it doesn't say you'll never sin. It says that you will no longer be a slave to sin. In other words, we should be at a point in our life where we can say, or at least we need to be heading toward this point, There is nothing in my life that controls me. There is nothing in my life that controls me except the Holy Spirit. Amen? You say, well, I sure wish I was free from sin. Well, you know what? You're never going to be until you first start believing that you are. (laughs) That's okay. We'll go slow. I get it. Well, if I'm not, how can I be? It says I am, but are you sure I am? Yes, you have it. You have it legally. Jesus died to set you free from sin. But experientially now, after you believe that you have it, experientially, as you walk with God, you'll manifest it little by little by little as you grow in him. You'll you'll change. There will be some things in your life that will change from being here these next three days or two days or one tonight or however often you get to come. There will be things that will change, but it won't be the last thing that will change. There will be other things that will need to change. We're always growing in Him. But still, you have been set free and I have been set free. Every born-again person on the planet has been legally, by the blood of Christ, set free from bondage to sin. There it is right there. I mean, yeah. that's what we have to hold on to and work toward and trust in and believe. It says in John eight thirty six, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there are so many things that keep us from that because we think one minute, yeah, yeah, I'm free. Mm-hmm. And the next minute, but I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. One minute, yeah, I'm going to be free of this, but in the next minute but I want this bad thing more than anything else, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. because that that's Absolutely. how that's how this struggle works in our lives. So we want to leave people with some 
I guess a pathway maybe yeah, toward yeah. freedom. What what are some of those steps that we can practically take to see this not just be a scripture, but to be reality in our life? Yeah. Well, some of my stuff is that that's helped me is understanding number one that change is inevitable. Like change is going to mm-hmm. happen because I allow things that change and pivot to bind me. Like because I, I like control, so change is inevitable. Um, and and just really declaring that I I am free, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm and also declaring that I'm not perfect. <laughs> that is such a big one right there. Mm-hmm. I'm not perfect, and I like, don't have to be, and I don't have to be. God doesn't yeah. even require that yep. of me. Mm-hmm. He doesn't expect that of me. And if I do make a mistake, mm-hmm. that I can go to Him without being afraid, and just and tell like, Hey, I messed up. Forgive me. Yeah. You know, and knowing that He will with all love, forgive me and, and lead me on the right path. And then also like to not live for people. Like I can't be so concerned yeah. with how people feel about me mm-hmm. that I live in bondage and I live in fear of like making the making people think I look a certain way, like yep. caring what people think. And also like I have to accept who I am right now. And that's just, that's mentally, spiritually, physically, and love and like love who I am and where I am right now as God had because God intended on me. He knows who He knew how I was going to look and be and act mm-hmm. at this very moment in this mm-hmm. day and just have fun in yeah. this present moment. Yeah. One thing I think you said, or it was Joyce. One of the two of you said this recently. They're both like very a couple smart. minutes ago <laughs> about like like the length of time it takes, and I think that that's really important. That it it's not necessarily immediate. So I know like for Mike and I, we were talking last night about all this and it was just a a really good conversation. And I thought, wow, we've come so far in two years, but that's not how I felt two years ago. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to feel the weight of this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I will forever be traumatized by how this happened. But, but I didn't, I didn't get stuck there. So I just, for me, it was pouring myself in the Bible and like, it was one day at a time. It was like one minute at a time, I will look at verses on healing or forgiveness or anger or whatever. And even if I don't feel free because I feel so rejected today, I'm going to, I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and fight for that freedom because I know that's what God promised I could have. Yeah. So I think that's really important that you don't give up on it because it feels so far away. Yeah. It is small steps. That's really good because you're right. Time can be such a gift from God. Mm-hmm. It can be such a healing salve that doesn't remove us from what happened, mm-hmm. but it, it gives our heart time to heal. It gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to work in our lives. Yeah. And and for me, one of those really important steps toward healing is realizing who and what I give power over my life. Am, am I going to depend so much on what somebody else thinks of me that mm-hmm. I don't have freedom? Am I going to depend so much on what position somebody else puts me in? Or am I going to depend on who God says I am? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's really the cliche of knowing who you are in Jesus, who Jesus says you are. But it's, it's a cliche because it works, right? It's yes, just, true. It is the <laughs> most important thing there is. Mm-hmm. And realizing that freedom comes from, like you said, Jay, a decision every single day of what am I going to focus on today? What am I going to think about today? Who do I know I am today? Mm -hmm. Or will I allow something that might knock me off my feet, Mm because it happens to all of us, to continue? It's going to have a little bit of power, and it's going to hurt. But... I won't allow it to continue to have power over me yep. for the rest of my life. One thing I think is really important, and if like if our friends hear nothing else today, I think it's so important that if you are the person who is struggling and you have a secret, like you said, that tell somebody today. Just, yeah. And we pray that it goes well for you, and we pray that you're met with grace and love, but tell somebody because that it's not healthy for you, and God has so much more for you than to be all tight like that. Like yeah. we want to live yeah. like mercy. We want to live yeah. with that yeah. freedom and that grace. Yeah. So talk to somebody. There's so many good examples in the Bible knowing knowing who Jesus is and how he dealt with things, of course, is always, you know, 
our, our guideline. Mm-hmm. What would Jesus do? But there are other great examples in the Bible. I, I think about, you know, Mary when she was told that she was going to have this baby out of nowhere and her yeah. life was blown out of the water. Yeah. And she chose to say, as you say it is, it shall be. And, you know, she chose at that point mm-hmm. to not freak out. But to, <laughs> to see that God was blessing her. And, you know, there, there are just so many examples like that when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den and, and yeah. worshiped through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are so many reasons that we should be freaking out because yes. there are situations in our life that try to snatch away our freedom yeah. and, and who we are. But coming back to that, no, my, my foundation is Christ. He has a hold in me tighter than anything else that I see, and mm-hmm. I'm going to depend on that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really encouraging. Super encouraging. So we want to offer you something that I think you'll find is really, really helpful because this is the foundation of all of it, and it's the Scripture. It's what God says about who you are in Jesus. Um, we talked about Project Girl. If you go to projectgirl.org, there's a place on there that you can um, find about knowing who you are in Christ, and it's a wonderful list of Scriptures for you to stand on to declare, to hold on to Mm -hmm. when everything else seems different. Um, It is the best way to freedom that you'll ever find. So go there, um, projectgirl.org, projectgirl.org, and get that knowing who you are in Christ. You can always go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, watch our other episodes, make sure that you stay caught up, um, subscribe wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And um, we are so grateful. We just encourage you today, like Aaron was saying, like Jay was saying, I, I don't know what it is in your life, but if there's something that's just come to the top of your mind as we've been talking about this. And you've you said, yes, it's it's this. Mm-hmm. This this is that thing that I haven't been able to let go of. It's that unforgiveness or it's that thing that I can't say no to. Or it's that person who feels like they've impacted how I see myself. You can have freedom over all these things. Freedom is yours. God has it for you, so fight for it. And we will see you right here next time as we talk it out together. And let me just say this. I am so proud of both of you. I'm so proud of both of you, of how you fought for who you are and what God has for you and shared it to help others. Um, It's a big deal. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. We'll see you next time. JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast. And let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us. 